Hello, hello, and God bless you. Good to meet you today on air. It's welcome to Wow Mom. My name is Ellen Mongan. I'm the host today, along with my co host. But before I introduce my co host, I want to tell you we have a surprise for you, and I love surprises. We have a guest, and I always get excited when we have an interview or a guest. Last time, well, last time we had Dr. Ray. It's a wonderful, wonderful um, podcast. I encourage you to go on YouTube under Wow Mom and, and hear him speak. He's a wealth of knowledge. Today, I'm not going to tell you the surprise. My co-host is going to introduce her, but before too long, I'm going to say, hey, Jane Ann, how's your week going? Hey, Ellen, how are you? Good morning. It's going great. It's going great. Did you, did you, um, anything exciting on your staycation? I just think I'm, I'm wearing thin, Jane Ann. Remember the thing about the mar marathon? I'm wearing thin. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm, um, I'm starting to get that way a little bit. I'm having to, um, really pray to overcome that. <laughs> I say, like, I it's getting hard. It's getting hard. I think endurance isn't my strong suit. I don't know. I see the sun shining through your, through your room. And I think like this, the sun is shining through God's people. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, uh, yes, that, that's, that's, Yes, let's hope so. Let's hope so. But it is. It's getting. Um, um, I find that it's getting more confusion. Confusing. I have to like really pray against confusion because there's so much information out there, and then they'll they'll say, "Well, that's not true," and this is true, and I don't know. It's just so. This morning, our, our reading, our okay. liturgical reading out of the Psalm, it was blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord, and I'm like, Lord, I'm taking refuge in you today. That's exactly right. That's all. That's all. Not refuge. listening to all the the naysay. That's right. And in God alone, I place my trust. I was going to do a little prop for, for our guest, because I'm to give kind of like, you'll know who she is. See, I wore my hat today because my hat's off to uh, mothers of large families, moms of many, especially ones that have mm -hmm. lots of boys. However, today I'm going to talk about something different because they all are getting tired of my jokes. But look, at <laughs> y'all see, see my roots are showing? I mean, there I am. That's me. 66 years old. Oh, I'm not really a blonde. <laughs> breaker, breaker. Oh, yeah, However, what, talking about. what I like about this guest that she's going to do, the so surprise guest, is that when your roots show, that's the real you. See, I'm the real me. I asked my husband a couple times, should I go brown? He goes, no, I met you as a blonde. He doesn't even know me as a real me. But I'm really pretty real. You can ask him. That's why we're like it on the air. We're pretty real with each other. We're married 46 years. So she's going to talk to women about how to be the real you. How to, I mean, on her books. Her books are all real. And the part of what I like about her books is the fact that you never know what you're going to get. Kind of like we talked about, remember Forrest Gump? You open the book and you think it's going to be one thing, but it's something else. She's, yeah. Yeah, she's so real. It's like a mystery writer, but... She writes real for moms. So, Jan, want to introduce our surprise guest because here she comes. Jan, yes, you. we want to introduce, and we are so happy to have Rachel Balducci. And I'm just going to read a little bit about all her accolades and what she does. So, there's so much. She's she's a wealth of information and a knowledge. And um, Rachel is a newspaper reporter. And she has a master's in journalism from the University of Georgia. She is married to Pat Balducci, an attorney in Augusta, Georgia. And Rachel and her husband, Paul, have five strapping sons. I love that. I can so relate. <laughs> and one precious daughter. <laughs> Rachel is amazing. She has a newspaper columnist for Southern Cross, a television co-host of The Gist on Catholic TV, a retreat speaker and published author. Lastly, she blogs at testosterone.net. I love that. She writes about faith and family and her everyday life as wonderful as a wonderful mother and a devoted wife. And for example, the art of keeping the bathroom clean or how to survive mounds of dirty laundry. But mostly she is a wife and mother. She's working to stay sane and happy in the midst of raising her children. She loves her life and all the crazy that goes along with it. She and her husband, Paul, both came from good stock. <laughs> what is their secret to marriage and family lives? And they are centered on, as they are centered on Christ. And also, uh, she had one of her first books to be published right after the birth of her daughter. And I think that was your number six child. That's, that is crazy. <laughs> A joy in the crazy of the life of boys. And I can't wait to learn from you today. And also to talk about your book, this is Make My Life Simple, Bringing Peace to the Heart and Home. And I really loved this book. It was great. It was really good. It had so much information and so many, um, like you could do the things now. You know what I'm saying? And it was just, and you're right. When, you, when I started reading the book, I thought it was going to be kind of about organization. And then I found myself so where she is in the transition and the season of life. Mm 
because we also have five sons, but we also have six daughters. So, but anyway, take it away. Hey, Rachel, I call her the radiant Rachel, but it didn't mean like the one on that movie. I don't know what it was. It came to you later. I go, maybe she's going to take this wrong. There's a children's movie, but she's radiant because she puts her center on Christ. So, Rachel, welcome to the show. Thank you, ladies, for having me. I'm so excited to be here with y'all. Okay, so we are like we kind of let the show go. We pray, come Holy Spirit, and we just let the show go. And so we always go like let them talk about what they want, and then if we get a lull before the host comes out, we, we say we ask a question. So Rachel, tell us what tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you want to share today. Sure. Well, um, yeah, I you know we were talking a little bit before the show started about, or maybe before I came on about how we're doing and these crazy times and wearing thin and roots starting to show. And, you know, I don't know if we're kind of universally hitting, hitting a wall. Um, and I found myself even like, don't cry on air because not that I'm sad, but I'm like emotional all of a sudden. Like sure. Friday was just a terrible day for me. And things are really even peaceful in my home. Like I keep reflecting on the fact that if this had happened like selfishly 10 years ago, I would have been probably have to be peeled off the ceiling. Just like, home with a pack of little boys and now it's college kids. So I'm starting to refer to myself as like Val Ducci, you know, fraternity. Just hang out all the time. Party. <laughs> there's a party here. So, you know, so I'm having a lot of fun and there's a lot of beautiful things going on. Like the Lord's just really, you know, in the midst of, you know, a rough time. I think there's a lot of grace. But anyway, Friday, all of a sudden I was just like, I'm just done. Like, I, I don't even know what happened. I felt sad. I felt like a loser. I felt just emotional. I was getting on social media looking for affirmation, mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden it was like, I really just like, just had this ugly cry, you know, called my husband. He, he kind of listened, was like, you know, and I always have to kind of say if I call everybody's alive and it's okay, but I'm just going to freak out for a minute, you know, and, you know, and then I kind of had to like, work my way through the day of just kind of, you know, asking the Lord to help dig me out of, you know, get me out of this ditch. But then just being honest with a couple of friends, I texted a couple of friends and I'm like, I, I'm not even struggling. is not even a strong enough word. Like I am a loser. I, you know, it was just like as low as you can get. That's where it was. And so little by little, it was like, I think the devil really just wanted me to feel completely alone. Like you're such a loser. You shouldn't even admit to anybody what, cause you are a loser. You know, I was like hearing all these voices. And so it was like, you know, having my husband remind me that it was going to be okay. And that all my efforts with homeschooling and trying to keep my kids, you know, safe and warm and clothed and fed was good. And then friends who said, you're not a loser. We all have, you know, you have to be reminded. We all have these mm -hmm. moments because when I'm in the trenches, I feel like I'm the only person who's ever felt this way. And even if I know that can't be right, I can't believe it in that moment. And, you know, I really had to have somebody else tell me that. And then it was like, step away from social media, like mm -hmm. quit looking for evidence of loserness. And I tend to do that. Like when I'm feeling low, I go around and I look for evidence of that. You can always find evidence if that's what you're looking for, you know? Oh, yeah. So praise God. By the end of the day, things have turned around. And then when I woke up Saturday morning, I was like, what was that? You know, it was just like a tsunami. And I think it was whatever we're all talking about. It's like, it's not that we're necessarily, it's not that we're just even aware. It's this feeling of a marathon. And I'm like, I don't even know what mile this marathon but i just know i'm tired right now you know so i got a good night's sleep i had some truth spoken to me um you know it's hard right now because i don't feel like i'm able to spend the same kind of time in prayer that i typically do when i'm when my life is in a in a better groove um you know uh la this past year i started working full-time um outside the home and so I teach at the university, I teach journalism, and there's an adoration chapel right across the street from my office, basically. So I've just gotten in this, this beautiful routine of, you know, popping in there for, for regular prayer time. And that's huge. Well, that's not where we're at right now in life, you know. Um, so it's kind of like trying to, to remind myself of the things that bring grace and peace, but also recognize it's different right now, you know. And so... 
that was just like pretty i hope that that was me hitting rock bottom in the middle of this like i hope that's not going to be a weekly occurrence <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, that'd like, be the one time i do that like, uh, but you know who knows so, anyway i think a lot of us are just feeling that you know and we're just trying to you know uh keep our cool and you know be dignified as best we can in the midst of it and know that sometimes you're gonna just get some ugly cry mascara going down your face and then <laughs> Wash your face and regroup. So, but you know, think, I, I appreciate you, la you ladies saying that because I totally am feeling a little bit of that myself. Well, don't you think, Rachel, you live in a house full of boys, really? One little girl, uh, precious, but Jenna has that too. Her first five or, well, her first, for, after her first girl, she has five boys in a row. And you're in a whole room full of the name of your blog, which you're going to share later. And the thing is, Women are like this. I like my hair. I like my hair. I hate my hair. I hate my hair. And if that's why men don't mentor women, I never witnessed men telling women, not telling women what to do. Our husbands, that we lean on them. And if you tell my husband, by the way, I don't like my hair today, <laughs> like that's going to get knocked over. You know what I'm saying? I'm just using that as an example because it's something non threatening. But there are days with women that they don't even like their friends. They don't like themselves. It is. We're, we're emotional creatures. That's why when Adam and Evie went, whoa, wow. <laughs> Jenna, what do you think yeah. of a house full of testosterone? I, I, well, I just have to say what she, I just want to piggyback on what she was saying. And I was so feeling that too. Even like, uh, I was kind of feeling sorry for myself, but, but at the same time thinking I have to be the strong one for my kids so that we can just kind of keep a normal routine going. But I am homeschooling. So that part has kind of been the same, although we've fallen off the wagon a little bit, well, <laughs> like a lot. But I, so I was feeling like that too. I was like, I have to regroup. Like, and I was going to the, I was, pulling out some of my books and my journals and social media. I'm like, I gotta have some affirmation of my, what's my calling? I kind of felt like I lost my calling. Like, okay, well, let me get back to the basics here. Uh, maybe I need to do a military boot camp homeschool day. I don't know, but I was, I was me too. And then I even was like feeling sad because our, we have sons that, uh, so we have a son that's 18 and we have a son that's 17. And then I have one that's living here that's 20. So I'm kind of like you, Rachel, we have, you know, and our one son's becoming a firefighter and he's been really studying and um but anyway so our one that's 18 he's he has a job but he comes and he goes and i kind of was feeling sorry like he never wants to hang out with us anymore and what's that all about so i mean you know i think the enemy was trying to like really you know mess with my mind in that area so yeah i've been feeling the same thing i'm like whoo and that's I'm ready for the Eucharist. That's I'm right. like, yeah. that's what I was like, I was I'm like, really right. missing the Eucharist. Right. I need my strength. That's right. Yeah. We got to pray really fervently. Rachel, that's why you wrote the book, though, isn't it? Because in life, when we simplify, I have the same book she had out, but we simplify, our, we get to just simplify our life and say what really is important, and then it gets back yes. to Jesus and the Eucharist. So I just thank you for coming on and tell. You know, this word is going to be, we, we I never know the show is going to go. This is the most important part of the show right now. It seems like it's not about the books are you but it's going to be a this is what women need to hear we can yeah. do something we can do labor for like one whole day <laughs> yeah. we want the, you know, we're done we're done I, 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 we're done we go like hey I, I labored and my babies i am fortunate to get labors short but with women i watch my daughters labor after a while you're like done give me some you know? yeah. <laughs> so I know. Well, and i love these kind of conversations because i think for women it, it may be for men too, but I, I don't, I have learned not to try to get inside a man's head, you of know, course. like, yeah, yeah. I try not to, well, no, no point. <laughs> so for women, I know that, um, you know, it's so important that we know we're not alone. Now that doesn't mean we're all the same. And I'm learning that too. You know, we all have ways that God made us and our unique personality and we have different things that make us click. And I know, you know, like the other day when I reached out to a couple of friends, my struggles the things that really are my weak points, and the devil knows that about me, my my insecurities are not the same. And I think that that's really easy for us sometimes, too, to look at somebody else and say, well, they don't ever seem to feel insecure about, you know, this or that. And then sometimes you come to find out in those moments when you're willing to be vulnerable that you, an area that has never even occurred to you would be an insecurity mm -hmm. is something that somebody else struggles with. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, I've just found that spot as a writer years ago when I started my blog, Testosterone Moments, because I had all these little boys and motherhood was not what I thought it was. And I felt sad a lot because I was like, <laughs> this is not what I thought it was going to be. And it's kind of funny because the, on Friday when I totally lost it and I was like, ugly crying in the kitchen and, and, you know, and I try not to do that but here and there I think 
I should because when my boys get married and if their wife does it, I don't yeah. want them to think they married a crazy woman. You know, like <laughs> that's good. Or, or they married a crazy woman like their mom. Do them a favor. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So Isabel came up to me and hugged me and said, "We're gonna get through this, mom." <laughs> yeah. Was it the girl? Like, this is what I, you know, like back in the day. I don't know. I thought I'd, you know, the, I know now that the boys are on my team, but it's different. So anyway, that's when we started writing is all of a sudden, little by little, I was like, I got to write to process how crazy it is to have this pack of little boys. And then I found really this sense of community with other women who were like, yeah, raising boys is different. Okay. So I kind of learned that early on in, in my blogging and writing that, um, their vulnerability is this, it's a scary thing, but it gets us to, you know, to the sense of knowing that you're not the only one. And I love that, that quote, you know, friendship is born. I think it's C.S. Lewis when, you know, you say to someone else, oh, I thought I was the only one, you know? And, and so for me, when I wrote, you know, make my life simple, it was really just this idea of like, I have learned over the years that um, women, it's very easy to feel isolated mm -hmm. and when we can break down those barriers. We are stronger for it. And, and that not everybody is at a place just yet maybe where they feel like they can admit certain insecurities to people. Um, and, you know, for me, enough time now has gone on being a mom where I've been, you know, been knocked down by the waves and gotten back up and I've learned, okay, you know, nobody's got it totally together, even though it's easy to feel that way sometimes. Um, and, and so kind of, I've learned it's good to put yourself out there because it encourages other people. So uh, yeah, I started this book because and it's, it was a crazy concept where I wanted a book that was somehow equal parts practical and spiritual because we are created with all of it, you know, and I, and really the way the book is written and I explained this, I think early on is it's like this circle, like it starts with God in our relationship with him and it ends with that. But that's, you know, we don't live in a bubble that's exclusive to just sitting, you know, in adoration or sitting in mass. Oh, okay. And so we have our time with, with Christ but we also have laundry and menus <laughs> and, and carpools, you know, and those things I have found when those are working well, it's not exclusive to, you know, how well I feel in life. But when I have that kind of order in my life, it really just, um, just firms up, you know, the, the order I have from a good relationship with the Lord. And I actually was so excited because I'm reading this book about Ignatian spirituality and it's by Timothy Gallagher and it's called the discernment of spirits. And I totally would have put this in my book, but I um, just found it like two days ago. And it said this, the less we do to overcome physical tiredness or psychological depression, non-spiritual desolation, the less we do, the more likely we are to experience spiritual desolation as well. If we are tired or depressed, the step to discouragement in our God giving calling to diminishing fidelity in prayer or in God's service generally is very small. From the perspective of the spiritual life and specifically in regard to avoiding spiritual desolation, it is imperative that we be wise stewards of all dimensions of the humanity God has given us. And I was like, I, I read that book. I was, so <laughs> I was so excited because, you know, it was something that the Holy Spirit had just put on my heart of like, you know, paying attention to, the things in me when I'm feeling stirred up and, you know, overwhelmed, what spiritually is going on, but what practically is going on? Like, are my relationships good? Okay. So start with prayer time, but then from there are my interactions with humans positive is my house in good order. And it doesn't mean like how to have the, the cleanest house and the, you know, be the best homemaker, but it's paying attention to ourselves and figuring out what needs do I have in my life, you know, to make peace abound. And we all have those things. Like for me, I just can't let the laundry pile up. But I'm okay with, with not cooking a three-course meal every night. I don't even cook a two-course meal. I cook one thing and then everything else is a non-cooked thing. You know what I mean? That works for me. Um but I know, you know, there are people out there who they don't want to deal with the laundry every day or they don't, you know, they have the way 
practices. And my point in the book is not to say, here's the right way and here's mm -hmm. the wrong way, but it's really getting in touch with paying attention to what dr makes us feel peaceful, what makes us feel closer to the Lord, and what robs us of our peace. Um, and, and then I kind of talk my way through, like, as I started to write this book, paying attention to, and I kind of, um, the way I broke the book down is in thirds, and it was basically practical peace, and then that was order within the home, and then personal order, which is body, mind, and spirit, and then finally going into our spiritual growth, Jesus and others and you. Um, but really, that's first, but it's also last. And so that's how it's kind of this cycle is like, when I have, you know, a good relationship with the Lord, um, it's not, it does, holiness does solve all our problems. I remember our parish priest saying that years ago, Father Brett Brandon, and I, it was such a light bulb moment. Oh my gosh, you know, and at first I didn't believe it. You know, well, holiness isn't going to, you know, help my boys stay next to me when we go to the mall, you know, but it really does. It puts order in your life. And then I think it helps us start to see we're more in tune with the things in our life that we do need to pay attention to and get in the right order. So, you know, there's a lot of um, practical stuff, but then for me, um, what I have found too in, in my years of, you know, having a spiritual director and then just feeling like the Lord is just drawing me closer to him, you know, nothing I'm doing, um, but just, just being aware of his call to draw me closer um, and just kind of some spiritual freedoms that have happened as a result of that, that I just wanted to share. So I so like that, Rachel. I think the most important thing to me is that because I read the first chapter again today to kind of brush up on this book and she read, she's written all this. We're going to get to them, but I want to hear three the examples you put in each category, like one for each lady. Cause I think that'd be good. But I want to say that the freedom comes in, like not looking left or right, that you look just at yourself. Like if you look in the mirror, that's just me in the mirror and to be able to know yourself and then, you know, you know who you are. You're like, wow, she could cook a five course meal and I can only do like, I don't know what it is. I could just, but one sister I knew used to do a lot of McDonald's and Chick-fil-A and my kids loved eating there. They thought that was great. They liked, they liked the best, that was the best sister. You know? But the thing is we all have different gifts. There's certain things I can't sweep to this day, Jan. There's probably things you can't do, but I can't sweep. I had a taught preschool at St. Mary's on the Hill and I had the four-year-old sweep for us because I thought I can't sweep. Now I have an arm injury so I could go, my arm hurts. <laughs> Jan, what do you think? You do the best you can, and then you go, you leave the breast? Because I'm having her think about well, what she wants to share. Come. I, yes, absolutely. But also in the in her book, what I really liked about it, because I was able to relate with this, is that the seasons. And you have to recognize, and this took me a little while, that you have to recognize the seasons in your life, especially if you, you know, have children that are older or married. And um, I only have one grandchild, but, you know, but you understand, start to understand the seasons and that's getting to know yourself as well. So she talks about it in the book because I was able to relate with this because you taught at school and I also did for a short period of time. And that was the hardest thing because I had, it was a small uh, Catholic school here in Macon at St. Peter Claver, but I had all seven kids at school with me. And plus I was teaching, oh my gosh. And yeah. I went in in the oh. middle of the year, which was like, it was just, but I loved it, but it was the hardest thing I had to so many days crying because I was like, oh, I just don't feel like I, but I learned so much in those hard times. But I also learned a lot about myself, which is what you talk about in this book. And you give real life applications, which I love because everybody loves the stories and how they can relate. And that's where I really related with you in this book, because I was like, I did realize it was a season and I knew I had to do that season for some reason. I, I, I may not know till the other side of heaven. I'm not sure, but I knew that I had to do that. It was like, it was a calling at that moment at that season of my life. So I think really is to be able to become more self-aware. And when you're a mother with littles, the only season you can see is let me just get my teeth brushed, maybe get a shower <laughs> and get a meal on the table. I mean, when you talk about meals, you're not cooking a three course meal for when you have toddlers. Like, I, okay, I've been I've breastfed while I'm cooking, while I'm like, you know, because I have stair step children, 11 stair steps. So I'm like, but you know, you're just doing the, and, and when you're in that season, I'm speaking to mothers who, when you're in that season, you just have to realize that's what make my life simple. What is going to give you peace at that moment? And that's where, when you're having a lot of children too, 
you can't always listen to all the, the um, I'm, not, I'm not coming against doctors and pediatricians, but you know what? If you've had five kids and on the sixth kid or the third kid, okay, whatever works for you to get some sleep at night, let it be. <laughs> I would sleep. I had a baby in a crib and I was breastfeeding one and then I'd have to, I mean, that's a lot. I think, Lord, how, Jesus, how did I make it all through that? It's all grace. Because, it's all grace. I mean, but you know, you have to do, so make my life simple. That is, you know, bringing peace to your heart and home. And I would ask, Lord, what is going to bring me peace today? Amen. And I, yeah. would do, I would do what was going to bring me peace today. So recognizing the seasons in your life. So when you have toddlers, when you have littles and you're pregnant and you're t- breastfeeding, t- I mean, you know, that's a lot. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. And I love that, um, that you kind of had that similar, you know, experience with the teaching. That was really hard for me because, you know, it was a good lesson. I'm not saying that God didn't want me to be doing that. But I think there was an end time that I ignored. Like I had done it for two years and all of a sudden it was like, it wasn't peaceful anymore. But I just, I had this very, um, I I don't know if it was pride, uh, but this attitude of like, well, if I don't do this, then I don't know who can do it. Well, that I didn't need to answer that question. So I kept pushing through. And I think especially this can be hard for women when it comes to like, serving in the church especially you know for me i kept going back to it was the same kind of thing a small um christian school that my kids went to and i was like you know they don't pay a lot so i can afford to teach here and if you know i like i just have to do this and you know i had taken on a you know a burden that I didn't need to take on. And and that's what I learned in the midst of that situation is mm-hmm. our body, if God can't get our attention just through in our brain, right. he uses our body to start to get our attention. Yeah. Because I was anxious all the time, mm-hmm. crying, um, you know, just basically, and it's not that I didn't love, I mean, that was the thing. I didn't understand why it wouldn't be just perfect for me to continue to work there forever because I loved the people there. I mentioned in the book, my dad and I had classrooms across the hall from each other. I totally loved that. Um, why wasn't there peace? I don't know. I guess the bottom line is it's, it was time for me to not be doing that anymore, you know? Um, and so that's really can be tough. And I think, you know, it's easy to just kind of take this burden on. Well, they need me. I've got to do it. And then we completely burn out. And we're trying to come up with a solution to a problem that is not our burden to bear, you know, right. and I quit halfway through the year because it was my son, Charlie's senior year. And I was like, I don't want to look back and say that I just barely made it through. Like I, you know, and then it kind of like other circumstances came up and it was like, my husband needed me to be more present for him with his law practice. And, um, you know, the fruit of me kind of finally doing the thing that I should have done back, you know, with, in the beginning of the school year was just so odd, was just very evident right off the bat. But I do think it's so important, this idea of seasons. And um, my friend Danielle and I joke about this because, you know, we're on the gist together. And her husband said, you know, you guys say the word seasons like 10 times every show. But it's so true. Like, it's so it's, true. I feel like motherhood is all about that. You know, like what, you know, kind of going back to what we said at the beginning, like for me and the age my kids are at now, what this quarantine looks like for me, it would have been totally different 10 years ago. And I think moms, you don't always appreciate that when your kids are little, Mm. how crazy hard the season is because you almost don't know until you get out of it and you look back. And I remember feeling that way when Augie, our fourth son in five years, and when he turned three, all of a sudden, I literally remember almost like standing up because I'd spent so many years like chasing people (laughs) in a hovered position, you know? And all of a sudden, like, Oh my gosh, we made it through that, you know, like, I that, you know, and I didn't even know that there was life outside of like that concrete block on your chest. Not that it's not wonderful, but it's investment. Like you're yes. having birthing children and get, you know, bringing them to a certain point of like, you know, this kind of behavior, but there are going to be some years where it's just super intense. And, and I love that, you know. You got it. You have to do what works best for you. And I think we put so much pressure on ourselves, um, especially as, you know, moms who really want our children to know, love and serve Jesus. And so it's easy to look and see, well, so-and-so has a video of them doing this or, you know, they have a family rosary and it looks like everybody sits perfectly still or, 
You know, and I talk yeah. about that in the book too. Crazy things that we tried for family prayer until we settled on something that for the season we were in, this is what it worked. Like when I got into contemplation, I just wanted my boys to be contemplatives too. And so I lit all these candles in the front room and said, we're going to sit for 20 minutes in front of a room. That's not with boys. <laughs> and my husband was like, when it, you know, when it ended in disaster the way he knew it would, Paul was like, now what about that seemed like a good idea, you know? <laughs> and it was like, oh, that's not the season we're in. Now I can take people to adoration, you know? Um, it, having said that, in normal time, we usually, it's not like we have time to go there all the time because we're, you know, we have stuff going on. But it's, you know, learning to be okay with, I can't do it the way anybody else does it because I'm me and I have my kids. And so, and that I think gets back to, again, the more time we spend in prayer and not, not the kind of prayer where we show up and we tell God, here's what you need to fix and yeah. here's how I think it should be fixed, you know, um, but that we are really in tune with what is God telling me? How is he, you know, and really just experiencing God's love because so much peace comes from that mm. and then knowing who we truly are. And so the more I experience God's deep love for me, the more confidence, and confidence isn't even the right word. It's just deep peace that we have mm -hmm. in who each one of us is created to be. And then I'm walking around being the best mom to my kids because I'm being who God made me to be. And I don't feel like I have to keep up with, you know, a, a super popular Instagrammer. And God bless that person. They're doing great. And so then I can look at other people and feel inspired instead of competitive or, you know, slighted or uh, threatened, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I really do think so much goes back to peace. And then all of a sudden it's like, I'm peaceful with making these 10 things a priority in our family life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like I told my husband um, a few months back and we, we got in a groove of saying a family rosary and it was, it brought so much good fruit. And I said to Paul, if, if we can just do this one thing every day, then I won't feel worried about having to keep exact amounts of, you know, how much time is so-and-so spending on their phone with the bigger boys, you know, the college kids. Um, and I think that that kind of similarly relates to when we spend that, that good prayer, that time in prayer. And that doesn't mean you have to like get up early, light a candle, make sure nobody hears you. That doesn't work for me at all. You know, <laughs> I mean, people find, they can smell that there's a candle lit somewhere and they come find you, you know, but, that, but I think the point is less about what it looks like physically and more about what you're let your, what God is doing with you. And really, you know, I think the first step to, to prayer that I have found is even just saying to God, I'm here, please do with me what you will. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, I marked this off my list. I think I had a lot of years as a young mom where I resented prayer because laundry had to get folded. And, mm -hmm. you know, if I turned my head, kids would misbehave. And then when they were napping, that's when I actually could unload the dishwasher with nobody <laughs> trying to impale themselves, you know? So, you know, it's like, Lord, show me when I can pray and then please do with me what you will. And, and God really shows up, you know? He's with us in all these different seasons. I so love that, Rachel. I think uh, the important thing is peace. You know, your barometer is peace. And when the peace goes, you got to say, well, Rachel explained, what's going off? Is it my physical body? Is it my spiritual life? Is it my um, just relationships in general? And then, then I like the one about joy, too. We'll tell you that this season's over. All of a sudden, everything's a drudgery. That job or that relationship or that... Then the season's over. So, so yeah, get rid of your husband. Of course, we love our husbands. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 the season's over, but we can stay with that. Um, one piece of wise advice that goes along with this that Mrs. Hunt gave me, and she said that um, you don't have to be a good wife to everyone. You just have to be a good wife. To, I just, she said, let's talk about herself. I just have to be a, a good wife to Grand Chuck. And that was who she was married to, a pastor. And that's important, too. It goes along with, with your children and your marriage and your friendships. It has to be between you and the person, what works for you. And you said that a number of times, Rachel. I appreciate that. We have some questions for you, though. But I first want to say, don't forget to tell everybody about some of the things you do, like the gits and who would be interested. Because I find that just so so uplifting for me personally, even as an old person. And I love to see the realness in relationships. I don't like fake at all. I mean, I just, it's just for my dyed hair because I hide my wisdom. So everything's, I'm just blonde. But Jenna, do you have anything to say uh, this part of the show? I was thinking of even making it part two, but go on. 
I don't know how long. I never look at the clock. <laughs> No, I just I just want to say, um, you know, get the book and read it because it really is. It really helps women if you're especially in in a in a transition season. You know, it's it's just this is where I think the Lord helps us to get to know ourselves and more self awareness, like through the more prayer. Because all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're like, oh, and you look back and you're like, that was a season. And I don't know, that was like an aha moment for me, like an epiphany or something. I don't know. I think it's really important um, that you really do as women and mothers that we just recognize that we are in certain seasons and, and to recognize when you're in that season and when maybe God's calling you out, out of that season into another season. Like from some mothers homeschooling, you know, I've homeschooled, I've gone to, uh, they've gone to school, you know, just to recognize. I think that's key is to, to recognize. So having discernment. Yeah. And I, and I like that, that word discernment is just so important. And, and, you know, then the issue becomes, well, how do I know? And I think it's paying attention to the practical and the spiritual. And that's a big part. That's been a big that's part good. of reading this Ignatian spirituality book is like, being aware of what's going on within us. If you have um, a practical situation, and I'm finding this even learning how to do this with my mental game, when I start to have thoughts that make me feel churned up or, or scared, yeah. then I'm getting led down the wrong path. And it's mm -hmm. time to, piece. to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. How That's do I good. feel when I do certain things or when I think of certain things? You know, I find that on days when I'm feeling really sad that's not a good time to get on my phone and, and either read a bunch of news or scroll through a bunch of, you know, social media posts. How, how do things make me feel? And so, you know, in the very practical sense, we, we can do that same thing with our home life. You know, if I've got, you know, my six kids signed up for two sports each and we go from thing to thing to thing and I'm angry at my husband all the time or I'm sad or I feel like, you know, it's time to reconsider what it is, how we're spending our time, you know, and it's okay to say too, like it might work for you. And I, again, that gets back to this idea of like doing what works best for me. Well, how can I be confident knowing who God made you to be? And it's like our practical lives are totally tied in with our spiritual lives. That's um, and that's how God made us to be. And the one last thing I want to say is I just think that we, you know, we need to be reminded that wherever we're at is where God is has uh, and so we really have to be at peace with that the season you're in do i really trust that that where i'm at now is what god wants me to be doing that's good and so when we you know rest in that peace and that knowledge then we know that god's not abandoning us when you're a mama with a bunch of little kids don't look at the mom with college kids and think i also have to get to daily mass or adoration or yes do this to your work because, you know, or if my prayer life doesn't look like this, God knows where you're at. And he, you know, he, he takes all of that into account. And mm -hmm. I, you know, when I think about that, the years that life was really my outing for the day was <laughs> in the McDonald's drive-thru to get my, back then I drank Diet Coke and I drank a ton of it, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, that's where I was at. And so if I had tried to keep up with who I am now, you know, I would have been miserable. And I think I had some time where I would, you know, look, and you have to just keep your eyes on your own paper. You really do. Um, and again, getting back to, you know, spirituality and our real happiness is knowing, really know that the season I'm in now is exactly what God wants me to do, to be doing. And how can I do that for him? You know, and that's why I always joke about how can keeping my bathrooms clean make me a saint? Oh, yeah. Not because that? you can only get into heaven if your bathrooms are clean. It's the idea of like the practical, the practical nature of my life right now is the thing God is asking me to do. And I'm loving the person right in front of me. And mm -hmm. in some seasons, that's a snot-nosed toddler, you know, and in some seasons, it's the person at the grocery store. And in some seasons, it's your coworkers. And wherever you are, God wants you to just love the people around you, whoever that might be. That's good. Excellent. I like the fact that you answered all the questions without us even asking them because it makes it so much easier <laughs> to interview you. But, you know, I think of that, that thing, Mother St. Teresa of Avila, I believe, accept the things you cannot change, change the things you can, the wisdom to know the difference. You're, you're teaching the audience that very thing, Rachel, so thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add up? I gave questions in advance, but she did a great job of uh, encouraging the women. No, I was going to say coach the women on having boys. Then she gave so much advice. If you listen carefully this You'll be able to hear hear what Rachel's saying. Be yourself and do it God's way. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I have learned. I mean, I'm I'm taking notes because it's speaking to me. And then this morning, I was just you know getting ready for this, and uh, I was just in prayer. And I like to read the daily, you know, the liturgical reading. But I kind of felt like the Holy Spirit was saying exactly kind of what you're saying. It's like, okay, so you're scattering seed in a field that I have not called you to because I had not been feeling, you know, I had not, and I was like, wow, that's pretty profound. <laughs> but you know, I, going back, Jesus always taught a natural to a spiritual, that's always right. throughout his entire ministry. You know, just like calling our, you know, our blessed mother, ask him to turn, turn the water into the wine, you know, a miracle. But I mean, and how he, when he healed people and stuff like that, the, and the sower and the, and the farmer. But I was like, so that's why I'm not experiencing peace. And I love how you said that, the spiritual to the natural, you know, because I was like, okay, so there is a place that I have been really sowing into, scattering some seed. The Lord's like, I'm not calling you to that place. So that's exactly why I'm not oops, having the peace that I'm having. Sorry. I'm yes, I love that. That's a, I think that's such a great way to put it. Like you're sowing seeds in a field that you haven't been called to be in. I mean, that's such perfect imagery of, you know, how we can spin our wheels sometimes mm. and we keep, I mean, that was exactly my experience that last year of being, you know, teaching is mm. like, I kept trying to make it work and all yeah. I felt was like the next wave just hitting me, smacking me down, you know, and God doesn't want us to live at that level. Now it's different than saying, you know, um, life's really hard because you have a bunch of little kids. Well, that's the, that's the season you're in. There's no escaping <laughs> that. And again, it. You know, God's with us in the midst of these seasons, and He really, He'll give us what we need. He'll give us the tools. He'll give us the awareness to, to find ways to make life peaceful, you know, wherever we're at. Mm -hmm. Can you address, Rachel, because we talk a lot about large families, because Janet has love, and I have eight, and, you, and one I didn't have to raise, he went right to heaven. And you have you have seven, right? Seven, Rachel? Is that right? <laughs> I so, oh, see. I added another one. So, um, <laughs> can you address <laughs> large families? And that would be lowering the bar sometimes in your in your everyday life because you can't keep someone that has two children. It's not the same as raising eight or seven or six or eleven. Yeah, I think. I mean, and it goes back to just you know doing what works best for you. Like for me, um, I had to learn to quit comparing. Like you know, food is a big one for me. <laughs> not comparing friends who just it, that they naturally can just tackle that you know what i mean um here's the big one that i found so we had our four boys in five years and you know i said after that fourth boy we got really good at nfp and and Paul and I were both like, you know and that's another way you can't compare like you know i hear people who may have more kids than me and maybe it would have been easy for me to say well you only have four you look at all these women who can handle seven. I knew when I had that fourth son that <laughs> it was time for a break. Like I was, I, I describe it as I was not drowning, but it was the front edge of my left nostril that was <laughs> from not drowning. <laughs> you know, so I'm bobbing in the, um, you know, so. Okay, so fast forward five and a half years, and we were like, I was, because I had all my babies in my 20s, and here I was in my mid-30s, and I'm like, I'm not ready to be done having babies. So we had Henry, and then three years later, surprise, Isabel. Okay, so all of a sudden, I went back to the um, of little kids, but I thought it was going to be so easy because now I had big kids. Well, what I had was big kids who had games and a ton of homework and research projects and and that was probably yeah. the most challenging season of motherhood um, to, you know, at that point, up till then. And, and what I had to learn to do was two things. One, quit trying to keep up with other people. Like at one point, Paul finally said, you don't need to go to any more middle school basketball games. Quit <laughs> trying to drag a newborn and a three-year-old who Henry had, he, his, his name, Henry, means Lord of the House, and he has always <laughs> lived up to that. <laughs> He's a leader. He's a leader. <laughs> he's like in about town. So we would go to the gym, this three-year-old, he'd walk around, he had people to see. I mean, I remember at one one game looking over at him. He just had his his arm resting his head on the shoulder of, you know, the kindergarten teacher. He wasn't even in school yet. He was best friends with everybody. So it was exhausting to me to take people places. My kids didn't have that thing where they would stay right next to me, right? Um and so I quit trying to go to everything because I was totally operating out of guilt. My kids, they will not turn out good if I'm not there cheering for them at every game. <laughs> and then, you know, 
Two, to just really settle into my worth does not come from where I go or what volunteer work I do or how active I am at my parish or at my kid's school. In that season, um, my worth didn't come from anything other than, like slowly I learned ultimately, my worth comes from the fact that God made me. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm the best volunteer or because I helped father with the Lenten booklet um, and those were things I had done the year before. And all of a sudden I was like, I can't do anything. And I started to feel great peace because I wasn't making decisions based on what I thought would bring me, you know, like I love to do things. And, and, I, and once Augie got old enough, I really enjoyed being the person that was going places and getting to volunteer and be involved. And all of a sudden I was like back to, you no. Know, you're barely going to leave the house today. And if you're going to get your big kids to school, then you're going to be at home and it's going to be okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's like dirty. I think we, there's a lot where I have FOMO, I think the fear of missing out. And so I really <laughs> had to learn, you know, like it's okay. Life is not passing you by and it's okay to some days feel like it is that it's okay. You know? And I learned a lot in that season because now I, I, I am back to getting to do a lot. But, but I have learned um, that's not what brings you real joy and peace. Um, you know, doing what God asks you to do is what brings joy. But but don't ever try to keep up with other people because if that's not the season you're in, it's it's going to be bad for you. Yeah. I, I always say the Lord pulls the rug out and then you go like, where did he go? Whatever. I mean, those are <laughs> that's like, true. I learn, Rachel, you learn along the journey. I mean, kids, I think God sends us kids to... Um, Grow them in character as they grow us in character. I always say it because virtue is a hard thing to instill. They can't go like magic wand. All of a sudden, look at you're so peaceful or you're so kind. You may have the kid that's the leader. In, and you could think, well, would he just stay with me for five minutes? I had my kids on a leash, Rachel. I was very much judged by other mothers, but they're my kids. They climbed the walls. They, I didn't have a kid that sat and read a book. They're very intelligent, but they, they knew it would be more fun to like have mom chase them. And I... I've got my, my, I guess I got my figure in shape, but Rachel, so tell us a little bit about, um, be, before we close all the things you do, cause we're going to have to do last word and then close. Cause sometimes people tell us our podcasts go too long. And we don't take it as judgment. We actually enjoy our podcast more than the people that are listening. And some people say to us, who's listening? We go, we don't care. God told us to do this and we're doing it. We know it's going to grow. It's going to be the little seed that grows. So tell us some more things about what you do so they can reach you and, and buy your books, because I have another one here I didn't even show, which I'll show at the end, but go on. I'll show them Yeah, both. so my first book was How to Tuck in a Superhero, and like you mentioned, um, that book came out April 1st, 2010, and Isabel was born seven days later, I and mean, it was the craziest thing. So I was doing all these radio interviews with a newborn, and it was a disaster. I, I had to have people repeat questions over and over, because I'm like, what? What did you say? So that was, um, it's kind of funny that that book came out right at, uh, not it was not the end of that era, but it was you know certainly changed when Isabel was born. And then several several years later, I wrote you know um, make my life simple. And then just, just a few weeks ago, I had my third book come out. It's called Overcommitted, Which Cut I Chaos, am. and Find Balance. Uh, um, lot, it, We're the first ones lot, um, to Yeah, it's available on Amazon, and then it's through Word Among Us Press. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, please check it out. And then I'm a co-host of The Gist on Catholic TV, um, and we start our net our next season in the fall so we always um and i kind of like to explain this because on paper it does look and sound like i do all these things and i'm like no they're very compartmentalized right. you know i write a column for the southern cross um and i love that because writing really is just a um it, 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 i just love writing so and then the the television show i fly up to boston in june for one week and we take a whole season That's and then those seasons you know there's the episodes air um and then yeah i've got these books and then i just kind of happen to be teaching it at um the local university now doing teaching some journalism and public speaking and i i really enjoy that too but you know my main gig is is really being a wife and mom and so i'm always trying to to make sure all these other things fit into peace in my home, making sure my husband knows that I love him, you know, and that my kids feel loved and cared for by me. And, um, and just trying to pay attention to what God is telling me to do and where he's telling me to go. Lovely. And um, on the gifts, could you mention your co-host? Because I made a joke only because I couldn't remember how to, that one. I go, please, please tell the, the gifts co-host for you. Some people will know them from Catholic Bomb. Your co-host um, with you. The with, gist, with, yeah, with the gist. I'm on the gifts with Danielle Bean. 
and who everybody knows, and then Carolee McGrath. And, um, and I love this lady so much. So it's just such an honor to get to be with them. So yeah, if people want to check me out, I'm on Instagram at Rachel Balducci. I, uh, my website, rachelbalducci.com. Um, I have not blogged in a while. I'm trying to get started, but I can't figure out how to get back into my blog right now. So it's been tough. But, you know, I still have the writing outlet with the column at the Southern Cross. So that's really good, too. Okay, and y'all check out Southern Cross. This is, I, I love her writings. This is one of the books. Isn't that so cute, y'all? I really liked it. I thought it was going to be about raising boys, and it is. But it's kind of written in, like, stories about her boys. And I love the story about when the babysitter came, Rachel. You want to share that or the story? Or your toilet train, your toilet train, toilet um, cleaning tips at the end. I don't know. You think about what you want to say for last word. And it, I really do have to end the show now. And I'm sad. We'll have you on again, Rachel, if you don't mind. But I'm going to say, sure. Jane Ann, do last words and how to reach her. And then... You do last words, I'll close the show. We really have been giving people like a place about that. We don't really listen, we just pray. We go, okay, Jan, you're on. What's your last word? My last word? Oh, okay. Um, you can reach me at um, www.dimeadozenmom. And I also, uh, I have an Instagram and Facebook, and then that's my blog. And then, Rachel, do you have a last word you want them to go home with and remember? Well, I just want to thank you ladies for having me. It's been so fun chatting with you. And I just appreciate, you know, all that y'all do. I think it's so important for women, especially to know they're not alone, um, you know, and, and to really remember to look to other people for inspiration, but not to be, com you know, compete. Comparison is the thief of joy. And I know it can be easy, especially as we're, we're all trying to follow the Lord and, and be good, holy people to look at other people and feel like what they're doing is what we need to be doing. But really we just have to find that peace in being who God made, made each one of us to be. And, um, and that's where real joy will come from. So thank you guys so much for having me on your show. It's been super fun. Thank you, Rachel. We love Rachel. I watch Rachel grow up and then go forth and then I'll bear such great fruit. And she was, as a young girl, she was um, helped serve Mother Teresa's nuns. Some people, uh, friends of hers and all of them went in a, place and they all learn so much and it shows the fruit of her life but i was gonna read this whole poem but since the show went long i read the last two because it describes rachel and what she's doing give the world the best you have and if, if you never it will be enough give the world the best you have anyways you see in the final analysis it is not between you it's only between you and god it was never between you and them anyways so keeping your eyes on your paper i like that saying rachel my nuns you say Keep your eyes on Ellen or keep your eyes on Johnny if you're Johnny because you keep your eyes on yourself and you look in that mirror every day. My dad used to say, at the end of the day, can you look yourself in the mirror and say, I did okay. You know, we have to look first at us and the two fingers will point at us and we see what God has to say. And God wants to change us within as we take the journey. Rachel's mm -hmm. taking the journey and we thank you for it. Thank you for coming on board, Rachel. We loved having you. There's Rachel Balducci. And a sweet, sweet um, countenance of the Lord. And Miss Jane Ann, mothers of Marcia, the hero. She's the sweetest. Right, Jane, thank you. We did, get to, we did pretty good on the time, I think. You can tell me later as I close the show. And I'm Ellen Mongan. Thank you for joining us with Welcome to our show, Wow Mom. She'll be on YouTube with us under Wow Ellen, Wow Mom, Ellen Mongan. I always goof that part up, but I'm okay with that. So have a great day. And you all buy her books, read her column in Southern Cross. I always do, and I'm not even in Georgia anymore. And then please watch the gets too. That's a fun show. When you're having a bad day and your roots are growing out and you feel like, oh my word, I give up. <laughs> Put your hat on or watch the gets. Please know that Rachel is walking close to the Lord. Learn from her, young mothers, because she's a young mother too. But she's she's advanced in years by leaps and bounds because God had her raising a lot of boys and a sweet little girl. All good. In Jesus' name, we close out now. One, two, three. And thank y'all.